we've got our blank chucked up and we're ready to turn. Uh, I'm gonna start by putting a single coat of medium CA on this blank and I'm gonna let it sort of soak in. I will not use activator because I, I want it to dry slowly and I want it to soak down in between all of these little pieces and really lock them together. Once it dries naturally, probably a couple of minutes, two or three minutes, I'll come back and we'll get this blank turned. Just gonna put a nice liberal coat, hoping that I don't glue this blank to the bushings. I mean, if I do, I do. We'll figure out how to get it off, but uh, we just wanna make sure we get the blank covered completely so that uh, all of the pieces are glued not only to the tube, but to one another. All right, I'm just gonna sit here and continue to roll this uh, by hand. And the reason why you wanna roll it until it completely dries is because if you don't, the CA will all go to the bottom of the blank and it will form a nice big hump on the bottom of your blank that you're just gonna have to turn away uh, and you don't want that because CA is gonna be incredibly hard and that could actually cause me to damage the blank. So we're gonna roll it like this for a few more minutes. When it's dry to the touch, we'll be back and we'll start turning. I decided to stop before I get too far into turning this blank. This end's already been turned a little bit. This end I haven't turned. The other day I got a message from somebody and they said, look, why would you use a skew on those? Why wouldn't you just go ahead and sand them down to the bushings? So I want you to take a look at how much material there is. There's my bushing. Look how much material would have to be sanded away. It would take forever. And one of the concerns I have is that much dust being ground back into the blank with the sandpaper is probably gonna stain the uh, lighter maple pieces. So I prefer to use a skew and basically trim it right down to the bushings and then come back and do a little bit of sanding to uh, finish the blank off. Personal preference, if you prefer to sand, there's nothing wrong with that. Uh, I just think it would take forever and I'd go through a ton of sandpaper and it wouldn't be as rewarding as if I go ahead and just turn it away with a skew. You can see how quickly that turns with the skew. Walnut and maple are not very hard woods, so uh, when you use a skew, it does a really nice job. You get a really good finish on them. We are ready to sand. Gonna start off sanding like I always do, using a blank backing my sandpaper so that I can remove the tool marks. Once I've sanded away my tool marks, I take the remaining piece of the paper and I like to sand my blank from end to end. And what this does is remove any centrifugal scratches and help me get a really nice finish on the surface of my blank. I'm gonna go ahead and continue through with the rest of the grits. We'll come back and show you the blank when we're ready to clean it and apply a CA finish. I've swapped out my turning bushings for non-stick bushings and we're just gonna wipe the blank down with some denatured alcohol. The blank is drying and what I wanna do is just brush any of the paper towel dust off of the blank before I start finishing because I don't want that in my finish. Make sure you brush really well around the bushings because sometimes uh, it works its way off the edge of the blank uh, and gets caught in the end of your blank. Looks really nice. Uh, let me go ahead and get this little piece of plastic off of here. 
do not touch the blank with your fingers. You have natural oils in your skin that will make a blemish in the CA. So once you've cleaned it with denatured alcohol, don't touch it until you touch it with a paper towel full of CA. And we're gonna do that right now. First coat of thin going on the blank. Couple of wipes. Let's take a look at it. Oh, that's gonna be beautiful. I'm gonna put four more coats of thin five coats of medium. We'll micro mesh the blank and then we'll take a close look to see if there are any areas that need a little bit of additional attention because with these blanks, you know, there are gaps between the pieces and the CA will fill those gaps, but we want to fill them until we level the CA with the surface of the pen. And that's what we'll be looking for in a few minutes. I'll come back and show you the blank after it's micro meshed and we'll do our final inspection before we polish to see if we need to build the CA up any farther. Taking a quick look at the blank, turned out really nice. I'm watching the line across the top, looking for any indentions uh, in the blank that would mean I would need to build up the CA. So far, I'm not seeing any. Looking pretty good. Oh man, I'm real happy with this. We got a nice finish on it. Okay, I found one right here. This is the only one I found and it looks like there's just a little uh, gap between two pieces of the puzzle. And it looks like it's a little bit below the surface, so I'm gonna fill that. And then we're gonna micro mesh again. And uh, at that point, I think we'll be in great shape. The blank looks amazing. Wow, I'm very happy with it. Let me get that filled and uh, we'll finish up this blank. I've got my medium CA. I'm hoping to put just a dot on there without getting too much CA. There we go. I don't want it to get too deep or I'm sorry, get uh, too much of a bubble on the blank because I've got to clean all that up. All right, I'm gonna keep it uh, up at the top like this so that basically as it settles, it settles into the blank and it doesn't pull out of the blank if this happened to uh, rotate around to the bottom. We'll give it a couple of minutes to dry and then I'll come back and we're going to uh, micro mesh again to clean that little uh, bump up. Now we gotta be careful because we could micro mesh through the finish. So I'm gonna keep a close eye on that. After I uh, work with the first two or three pads, I'll take a look at it. If it starts to look kind of dull, I'll clean the blank and add a couple of more coats and then I'll micro mesh. In order to get rid of the little bump that was on the blank where I filled that uh, little divot there, I sand it with 320, 400, and then 600. So you can see the blank is a little bit scuffed. What I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna clean it and then we're gonna put uh, maybe three more coats of medium on the blank. And at that point, I'll be ready to micro mesh. We'll come back and look at it in just a minute and see how that micro mesh finish makes this blank look. The blank looks absolutely amazing. That little spot is level with the surface. I don't see any other blemishes on the blank. I'm gonna go ahead and apply a little Renaissance wax and we're gonna get this buffed up and we'll meet next over at the uh, assembly table where we'll get this assembled into a kit. Before we can assemble our blank into its kit, we need to remove the kit from the blank it's currently attached to. We'll start by removing the nib section. We'll set that back here. I've got a punch that is the proper punch for a 27 64 inch tube. I'll insert it into the tube. I'm gonna hold the blank in my hand and I'm gonna tap it with a hammer and I'm gonna knock the cap section out of the blank. There's nothing wrong with this blank. We'll set it aside. Maybe we'll assemble it into a pin at a later date. We're gonna take our blank and we're gonna rotate it until we find, there it is, the one little blemish that we had. This will be the cap end. So I'm gonna remove the uh, bushing. I'm gonna use this little tool to basically chamfer the end of the uh, blank. I'm gonna run a brush down through there to get any of the filings out. And now we will place our clip right over that little blemish. And we'll just press it together nice and tight. Remove our bushing. Let's take a look at our blank up close. Really nice fit there against the cap. 
other end looks good too. Let's go ahead and grab our nib section. We'll insert it into the blank. And the pin looks gorgeous. Take a look at the fit we've got. Let me get you a little closer and get this camera to focus. There we go. Look at the fit we have next to the uh, nib section as well as next to the cap. Very happy with how this blank turned out. I'd really like to thank you for joining me in the shop for the turning of this blank. Now, I did receive this from Kenneth Wines. However, Kenneth is no longer making these blanks. He has sold all of his patterns to a gentleman named Rick Cobb, and I will have Rick's contact information in the video description if you are interested in looking at what Rick has and maybe purchasing some of these gorgeous laser cut blanks because they are just phenomenal. I'd like to thank you for joining me in the shop. I want you to know that you are always welcome in my shop. Come back and see me again real soon and have a great evening.